Hey biggies and welcome to Brick Brewery, the pride of Deptford and Peckham. I'm here having one of the most lovely views you'll find in Deptford, uh, which is looking down on Brick Brewery. Today we're chatting to the founder Ian and the head brewer Tom about their amazing and delicious sours, which is probably what Brick are best known for within our little beer geek bubble. But actually, as you're about to find, there's loads of variety, loads of variation, and loads of amazing processes that are resulting in delicious beers, whatever the style from this brewery. So it's been a long time coming, but here we are, Craft Beer Channel at Brick Brewery. Brick has been on our list to visit for a long time. As one of London's first new wave breweries, they've never quite received the adoration of many of their peers, mostly because their beers have always focused on sessionability and balance, not the kind of beers to get rave reviews online or cause queues at festivals. But all along they've quietly been building a reputation for making beautifully nuanced kettle sours, using a wide array of fruits, spices and herbs, and carefully planning their flavours like chefs in a kitchen. That's what got us excited, but it turns out there was lots more to talk about too. Let's meet the founder, Ian. Thanks for having us down, Ian. This is, uh, this is quite a sight compared to uh, your Peckham Rye site, which I used to drink in a lot. Yeah. And um, I was always amazed by the amount of kit you had in the back there. Yeah, yeah we had uh, the one time in, in Peckham, and it's only like 100 square uh, meters, and we had uh, 10, of, 10 of these tanks plus the brew house. So it's pretty, pretty tight, very little place uh, to work. Yeah, so you must feel quite liberated now being in this space. Yeah, we were when we first moved in, quite liberated. Yeah. But as you see, you look around, and we'll, we'll take a tour of the site. Uh, we're, we're getting pretty tight in here as well, so uh, we've got eyes, eyes on other sites around the, the estate. Talk us around what you've got. Okay. What's your capacity? Uh, the, well, we've got a 15 barrel brew house, uh, so we've brewed about 32 hex. Uh, we can squeeze a little bit more. We do some high gravity brewing for some of the, when filling in some of the larger tanks. Uh, but we've got a three, three vessel system, we've got the mash tun, the copper, and we've got a whirlpool as well. As you probably know, we do a different sour every four to six weeks. Uh, which is quite a challenge because we're trying to create new ingredients and new adjuncts to, to add to the sours. We try and keep it uh, interesting, not just do say a, um, an, an orange crush, an orange sour, but we try and often pair it with herbs and spices as well. Uh, and then part of there, when we do an, a standard sour, we then put some of it away to barrel age. Nice. So we've got some barrels sitting right here. Uh, we've got all sorts of stuff in there. We've got, we're about to start doing some mixed fermentation from the barrels. Uh, but as you see, it takes up space. Yeah, it does. Uh, and it's, uh, we've had some that has been sitting there for a year. You've been going for about seven years. Yep. What's the origin? Why did you start Brick? Uh, I was actually working full time for a big corporation right. and a home brewer. Okay. Classic home brewer, Classic. you know. Uh, and then I, was, uh, I used to have a Mexican food business that I did on the side. Did you? Yeah, and I used to have a uh, 1962 Airstream caravan. Oh, man. And I was, I was over the stove, you know, cooking yeah. up uh, soft shell tacos and really authentic stuff. Uh, and then I did a private event for some Amer American expats and I said to them, do you mind if I bring down a, a, a job lot of uh, Corona like this? Right. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we're fully licensed, bring this, bring this stuff down. So I dragged my mate down to do the, to the, do the beers and I watched him serve and he, all he did was like tch, lime tch, and there was me over the stove like just sweating <laughs> bullets. Ping. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, and then I counted up the money and we made 10 times more money on the beer than we wow. did on the, on the food. Yeah. And I was like, That's, that, that was the aha moment for me. That's the way to uh, go. So I put a business plan together. Uh, my mum has always encouraged my brother and I to be entrepreneurs and start our own businesses. My brother's got a gin distillery Is up it? in Yorkshire. Um, so she was always encouraging. So I put pen to paper, wrote a business plan. Then I was finally made redundant from my, my corporate job. Been there for 20 years, so I got a nice golden handshake. Nice. And I used that to reinvest in the business. I mean, I, I've been drinking I, uh, round bar story. Yeah for probably nearly 20 years, now about 15, 20 years. Yeah. So for me, being from South London, it was a little horn, but it's probably not been that long that it was super trendy. No, I mean, I've lived there 10 years now. Yeah. Um, so I moved in when it was still a little bit questionable. Yeah. Uh, when the first rail you know, overground train came in, the house prices went boom. Yes. And then that's when things really started to sort of bubble and start to happen. So I do, I do consider ourselves to be one of the, the forerunners, like the first people into the area, behind Bar Story and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's been an amazing thing to watch how it's, it's developed and grown organically. So there's not the big corporations that moved in, it's actually been like young entrepreneurs that are willing to put a little cash in. 
and start a business really. So it's been wonderful to watch. Have you got any of your core range we can have a look at? Uh, yeah. <laughs> The yeah, oh, there's, there's some over there, the massive stockpile. <laughs> yeah, obviously they're empty cans, they're dry cans right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we've got the, uh, we, we'd like to keep the colours simple. Uh, yes. The inspiration there, all of our artwork comes from uh, Art Deco. Yep. Um, so if you actually get a close look, uh, we've got uh, a shout out to Brick, obviously. Nice. Uh, and then we've got the railway lines where we originated. Nice. Uh, running through, and then obviously the, it's textured, which uh, we were actually up for an award from Ball Packaging. Uh, they put us forward for an award for for the inventiveness of a packaging, and if you just it's got tactile f finish to it. Oh, that is lovely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're really proud of the cans. We we think they're simple. Uh, we haven't overcluttered it and overcomplicated it. Yeah. For our core range, and we have six in our core range now. Um, so we have a gluten-free uh, Hellas. We've got the Peckham Rye. We've got the Pale, the Pills, the Peckham Session, and an IPA as well. Yeah, I think they're really they're really bold. They really stand out. Yeah. They're nicely signposted just with the. With the yeah, and when you see them blocked next to each other, you know yeah. it's, it's really, powerful. really powerful. Yeah, but then we get we do get creative. Uh, so we have a we have a tiered um, system. So we call this our foundation range or our yeah. core range, and then we have a tiered. So we have a, a tender range. Uh, we have a. Um, if I, oh God, I should remember this now. Shouldn't I? My, my wife's going to be crazy with me. I haven't remembered it. Uh, but we, we we get a bit funky. We have um, again we have art deco art deco style for some of the can designs, so like the sours. Uh, but then we have postmodern um, for it's all about art, so we try and have the artist art influence within it. Uh, we use a different designer for three designs, and then we move on. Right. And what the the theory is that we want to give uh, a new designer a start in life so, to build their portfolio. So they typically shouldn't have had a, a commercial engagement prior to working with us. Right. So you're working with very quite young. Yeah, young. Yeah, wow, yeah, that's great. yeah, young, hungry, and and you know because there's so much art and, and creativity around Peckham and you know Goldsmiths University and stuff like that so yeah, and, yeah. and Deptford as well where we are now. The design brief is to have a repeat pattern yeah, that's, that's, pattern. that's yeah. influenced by uh, both what's in, in, in the can so the ingredients so obviously yeah. passion fruit you've got the passion fruit sort of seeds and what have you yeah and then you've got watermelon and lime so you've got you know watermelon and lime nice. patterns uh, that's a verbena so we just launched this one uh, last week so it's a verbena, uh, lemon verbena and mandarin. Nice. Uh, and then we've got uh, the strawberry and cucumber, which is actually one of the tanks right now. So this is a repeat one we've done. It's a summer smasher, really. I mean, yeah. we, we did it for Wimbledon and stuff. And so you get the strawberry and cucumber. That, that's, we, we brewed that actually four times now. Because typically what we do is we only brew it once and then we, we're done. We don't do it day. again. We call yeah. it a day. But we have repeated that one. And we're about to repeat the orange crush goes, which yeah. was really, again, smashable stuff. Is so. there a, like a... Is there a real reasoning behind not wanting to repeat stuff? Is it you've got so, so many ideas that you uh, want to just get out there? Or yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we, we don't seem to be short of ideas, yeah. um, but we do uh, allow everyone to be have input into that process. Yeah. Um, so we've got a black, uh, chalkboard upstairs that any sour ideas you've got, put them on the board, we'll sit down and chat about it. And then we do a tasting where we'll get in styles that are similar to what we're trying to achieve and say what we like, what we don't like, what we'd like to put in ours and what not to put in ours. Uh, and that, yeah, so it's a very iterative, uh, encompassing, all engaging uh, process. Really, there isn't one person that comes up with one nice. idea. Yeah, yeah. that was—I guess—that's what a lot of people wonder about breweries. If it's a mastermind that's sort of doing it, but it's nice to hear. It's a I think sometimes process. there is. I think sometimes there's one very opinionated individual that's very obviously very talented yeah. and can create every single brew that they do. But we feel that the, there's there's a strength in more people having input yeah you know? i like, mean there are some bad ideas don't get me wrong <laughs> <laughs> but i i've yeah. i've not created a beer in a long time you know uh, yeah. on my own the yeah. pill the pills and lager our foundation range here was uh, a beer that i did at home as a home brewer um for my wife who doesn't who wasn't drinking ales at the time she says can you do a lager and i said i did a home brewer over the winter of course, of course. it's difficult to do it in summer when you're home yeah. brewing uh, and then the recipe has, really hasn't changed much from then so it's styled on pills and raquel um, but we've, we've modified it a little bit, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's pretty much well, that. place to start from. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But lager, I mean, being one of the first, I think one of the first microbreweries in London to even attempt a lager, it is very cost prohibitive. It's such an expensive beer. And when you only add 3,000 litre tanks yeah. and it's tied up in there for six, six to eight weeks, it yeah. takes up a lot of time. And you, you know, you sort of don't realize that when you're starting out on this journey. So this is a, a cell of pills. Now yeah. this, this was brewed right before lockdown. Right. So we were able to keep it in tank because yeah. we weren't actually turning, turning the tanks. Uh, but this is a cellar pill, so it's a Keller, Keller pills, Keller style pills. Uh, we're cellared for eight weeks, 
just to give it that crisp, clean um, sort of character. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah, we, I personally think, we all think here at the brewery, it's one of our best beers that we've done. Amazing. I can see Johnny's getting quite upset with me. We've been talking <laughs> rather a long time now. I think we should go and try some beers. That sounds good to me. That salad lager got me seriously thirsty, as did the lemon verbena sour. So I handed the camera to Brad and settled in for a tasting. Starting with two of their sours. We actually cultured our own mix. mix culture blend, um, so it's a blend of a bunch of different lactobacillus strains. Um, we cultured it initially from raw grains, so uh, once we were happy with that, we banked it and yeah, we pitched that every time. Great. And how long does yeah. it take to go from what would be a normal beer down to where you guys are taking it? Uh, it's pretty immediate, to be honest. Right. Um, we're that good. Yeah. <laughs> it's sour. You're going to start with the strawberry? Strawberry and cucumber. Yeah. And where, where does the idea for the adjuncts come from and, and what form, I guess the form will change depending on what it is. but. For, for this one, yeah, somebody chopping up cucumber for a couple of hours before. The first one we did, right. yes. Uh, but then we sort of found a supplier that can actually provide... Provide the pre... Yeah, pre... Yeah. pre uh, I don't know what... Yeah. Pre-sliced? Pre-sliced, yeah. Pre-mushed? Yeah. yeah. But most of our sours are low ABV as well. So we shot a shoot between the 3.5% three, three uh, ABV. Um, just to, to keep it light, refreshing, um, yeah, and smashable, really. Yeah. We don't kind of... Um, tend to overfruit things like we don't really kind of get up there in the rates that I've seen a lot of other breweries oh, use. Yeah, it's the, kind the of triple fruit yeah, yeah, slow, we don't, which is basically a smoothie beer. No, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's all subtlety really. Um, and I think, yeah, having it a bit lower ABV helps keep the flavors a bit more neutral so the strawberry can come out um, more and easily. You can still get that base of the beer, which is that lovely kind of light lemony mm. kind of character. That, that's yeah. not hugely sour either. That's no. a really mellow squeeze of lemon kind of thing rather yeah. than a, a vinegary yeah, I, I, I mean, correct me for a long time, but we, we try to match the sourness with the adjuncts. Right. So if you want something a little bit more punchy and sour, we'll, we'll do it for a citrus sour. Whereas this kind of a strawberry is quite sweet yeah. and the cucumber is really refreshing. So we, we dial back the sourness a little bit on this one. Yeah. We play around with the attenuation as well. Um, a little bit of lactose in there to kind of balance out what might be vegetal with the cucumber. Right, so, okay. so when it comes to the design of a recipe like that, yeah, are, are you doing mini tests? Are you doing sort of sensory yeah. stuff like trying these adjuncts together at least first? And then yeah, yeah, always making little teas and, and uh, checking like what kind of volumes we want to use of um, the adjunct in question. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then you've used for this one the clay cubes, so yeah. the Norwegian farmhouse. Yeah. Vibe. Why is that so good with a sour? <laughs> um, I mean, it seems kind of like in the fact that nothing seems to be able to kill it or subdue it. Yep. Um, it's really acid tolerant um, and it still kicks out some really nice citrus esters which really work in these styles of sour. Yep. Yeah. It smells amazing. Mm. Really lovely. Um, it's kind of fantasy esque yeah. almost. There's slightly more acidity. Definitely really herbal yeah. fresh edge to it as well which you don't expect even from the aroma maybe no it's got a lovely green note to it that, that stops it becoming kind of pastry yeah pastry sour vibes it's really lovely yeah i think uh we've what we found with quebec strains as well is like uh, a slightly lower attenuation so um they're leaving a lot of residual sweetness, so again, we don't have to go in with as much lactose, lactose so yeah, which is always good. I never really want to over lactose, choice. exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it's leaving a bit of body, a bit of sweetness, and yeah. all those crepe beers kind of seem to have a little slickness that I guess comes from the slightly higher finishing gravity. Yeah, I think so. It's really good when you're, when you're having something fruity. You expect a bit of fleshy kind of body, I guess. Yeah. So, cellar lager, so you translated Keller from the German. Yeah. yeah. So. What's the difference? Because all lagers, lager comes from the word to store, so they're all sort of salad anyway. What's the difference between a, a lager lager and a salad lager? Yeah, we were just kind of experimenting with longer lagering times. I mean, um, we had a lull in production around uh, the time of lockdown, so benefit of that was all of our lagers were spending a lot more time in tank and sort of prefiguring that. Uh, we got something in tank with just some interesting malts. Um, that we wanted to try out and see how extended lagering would change the flavour. A few different types of pills the malt and a little bit of spelt, um, just for head retention mainly. Yeah. I mean that worked. 
That does have that. One day I'll work out what the word is, but it has a, a kind of tank fresh feel to it that I think is like a combination of, yeah, really long lagering and some um, like really biscuity, honey kind of yeah. malts. But just, it just takes me immediately to like Bavaria <laughs> or um, just up in, just up in the front Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it makes you want to have a big old stone, stone mug of it. Yeah. Like, we can always do also do the Merck bombs. Yeah. Yeah, we can well, also do the New England I can stuff. See this one here, so maybe <laughs> yeah. on camera we'll, we'll do a little bit of QC on that one. Yeah. We'll be into that as a hothead. Um, <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much for having us for sharing this well, round. Thank you. Uh, like I said, there's a web shop where you can go. You guys can pick this stuff up, and we'll come down to your tap room in Peckham, where, where you guys started. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Guys. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers.